Good evening and welcome to the Tuesday, September 20th meeting of the Transportation Committee. Um, we're all gathered here um, tonight and I will uh, turn the first order of business here would be the approval of our minutes from our uh, April 21st was our last meeting. No, June. June 16th. Well, I'm sorry. June 16th was I'm sorry, June 16th. You're right. I'm sorry about that. June 16th from the June 16th, 2020, uh, 22 meeting. Um, does anybody have any um, uh, additions, deletions, uh, corrections on the minutes? Just a clarification at that meeting. So at the meeting we talked um, about the Valley Green neighborhood and we talked about adding child at play strips to the, the posts. We did. Uh, um, actually, we're adding slow down strips to the post. There are no child at play strips on those. So just wanted to add that clarification and Linda highlighted that in the minutes. Um, so she captured it properly, but just wanted to clarify that uh, for the committee and for the record that we had the slow down strips. They've been installed, you know, as per the the committee's instructions at the last okay. uh, at the last meeting, but wanted to clarify that for the minutes. That great, thank you. Thank it's you. Not Linda exactly what that. we had said. So perfect. Any other? Um, I'm looking for then a, um, a motion to um, approve the minutes. I make a motion to approve the minutes um, with with the change that uh, um, Mark mentioned. And can I have a second? I'll second. Okay, thanks. Um, moved by Lori and seconded by Jason. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? No? Then it passes. Thank you so much again. Thank you again, Linda, for those minutes and the um, corrections as well. Um, next order of business is on under community discussion. Our first um, uh, application or, uh, is would be the Cambry Drive speeding concern. And I believe that's on you, Mark, Mr. Valentine. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Um, so this is off of uh, Watson Road, uh, Windsor Way. Um, so we did get a, a request from a neighbor in this neighborhood uh, with concerns over the speeds in the neighborhood. Um, so we had uh, a fair list of uh, traffic counts to get done this summer. So we had just put those out last week, um, but did want to provide an update to the committee that we do have the counts out now. Um, we'll collect them and then uh, be able to provide that data back at our October meeting. So at this point, we don't have information to um, provide or counts to look at, um, but just to let the committee know that they're installed, um, you know, at the request of that neighbor. So um, hopefully for, our, well, for our October meeting, we'll have it. We'll have the, the counts by the end of the week, compile it, and then get them off to the committee ahead of okay. the next meeting. Perfect. Thanks. Any other, any other additions to that? Qu questions? Concern? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, our second order is the request for a four-way stop at Hunter's Drive and Fox Hill. Again, that's you, Mr. Valentine. So this is just uh, the other side of the street. Um, we do have existing stop signs on Hunter's Drive north and south as it comes into Fox Hill. Mm -hmm. um, the concern came in of people trying to cross the road, walking through the neighborhood, people going too fast through the area. Um, we do have counters on Hunter's Drive South, just as we put them on Cambrai uh, last week. Um, we kind of put a mid-block just to kind of capture volumes coming through there. Um, but a typical four-way stop is, um, and Sarah, you can jump in, when you kind of have balanced intersections. Here we have, obviously the main flow through is the Fox Hill Drive that's going into the neighborhood. Hunter's Drive South is kind of a cut through between Silver Fox and Fox Hill. And then Hunter's Drive North is a, a dead end cul-de-sac. So um, gathering the speed and the count data, um, but did want to share that with the committee. The request was for the four-way stop. Um, say that's a traditional location, put a four-way stop if you kind of have the four balanced legs of an intersection, so. So with that, when we look at the MUTCD, there's generally three items that we're considering. We're considering the average daily traffic, and if that's above 6,000 cars per day, then we would look at putting a four-way stop in. If there's ad adequate sight distance, that would prevent us generally from putting in a stop sign. And if there's less than three crashes in 12 months or less than five in two years, that would generally prevent us from putting the stop signs in. Um, we are taking the count right now, as Mark said. Um, the sight distance in that intersection is adequate, at least at this time. There's no vegetation preventing that. And there have been no crashes in, at that intersection since prior to 2019 at the latest. 
um, we've only looked back to 2019. We did, I think you've sent in the request for all the intersections under consideration today to the Sheriff's Office just to get data back or at least reported accidents reported to the Sheriff's Office. So I know we put in for Cambrai, you put in for yeah, and this intersection, didn't have any. Cambrai I, I can address too. I figured we would next meeting, but that one was the only one of all of the intersections we're considering right at this meeting that had one crash and that was in 2021 and it was a person backing out of their driveway was hit by a car moving already in the roadway. So that's not an accident that would pertain to that concern that we're discussing. Oh, and because it is, uh, so at this time, the, really, the resident just had a cons just has no specific uh, the, incident. They requested the four-way stop, walking the neighborhood, walking. concern of crossing the street. Um, you know, trying to control speed as we've talked before with a stop sign really isn't the means and methods to you know control speed. Um, we'll count Hunter to drive south. We can put it on Fox Hill so we can kind of get that, you know, data of what the, the different legs are. Um, but Fox Hill is that kind of main um, thoroughfare, or I hate to call it a thoroughfare, it goes into a neighborhood so it's not a cut through. Um, but the main, you know, artery to, you know, lead into the neighborhood, you know, for other, you know, leading into other neighborhoods and, and coming in and out. So that normally is a free flow, you know, get people in and out of the neighborhood. You know, it's not as having a four-way stop but we'll do the counts and then you can, can come back with that at October meeting if there's anything else the committee thinks is necessary or other data together we can do that ahead of time as well okay any other questions on that no, pretty straightforward thank you we'll wait to hear on that information at the next meeting thank you uh, number three is on a Penfield Center Road, a child at play and blind driveway sign request. Mr. Valentine. So this is one um, that we just received. Um, Sarah and I uh, had an opportunity to go out and take a look at it today. Um, so this is Penfield Center Road east of 250. Um, Penfield Center straddles uh, both sides of 250. Um, two new houses were approved uh, fairly recently. We're, um, constructed so they're not really going to show up on the on the aerial photo um, so that's why we took some pictures two new houses at 1460 and 1456 um, they're back from the road um, but as you're approaching from the west heading eastbound there is a little bit of a high spot and we're standing in the driveway kind of on the south end there's a little bit of a knoll there as we're going over you know approaching so Sarah's got uh, the pictures there you know looking at as you come over you know where the driveway is on the other side um, and then this is coming from the other side, so it's kind of a little bit of rise of a knoll. You can kind of see the appearance of the barn, top half the roof, you know, over that. So the White House that sits in the middle, I think it's at 1410, um, you know, it's kind of the high point in the road, and you kind of lose the driveways and some of the houses on, on either side of that. Um, the two new houses sit back from the road a little bit, um, but there are some frontage houses, um, 1410 and beyond. Um, as Sarah's bringing up, showing that the houses sit a bit closer to the road. Um, I think there's been some turnover in that neighborhood with uh, younger families, kids, grandkids, and stuff, you know, in that area. So, um, what's the speed limit on the road? It is 40 miles an hour. So 40 posted at either end. Um, I know in a couple years ago we looked at Northrop Road, um, so just on the west side of 250, kind of as a country road, you know, um, more rural, and then we get to the, the western end, you know, where there's more residential homes closer to the road. Um, we did look at that, and I think, you know, this committee recommended putting in child that plays signs ahead of that just because it was kind of a change of going from rural to more of a residential, um, a little bit denser, um, you know, housing area in there, you know, with children um, playing closer to the road. So um, we did take a look at that today, just took some some pictures of that, um, you know, the blind driveway. Um, Sarah can speak a little bit more. We did take a look in the MUTCD and it's not a very defined yep, I limit on that. that. That's fine. Um, so in the MUTCD, a blind driveway doesn't have a specific sign that's formally approved by the by the federal government. So, what the approach that we took looking 
for actual backing up data was either a driveway entrance plaque or a blind driveway. And we were kind of looking to the committee to maybe give some input on what expectations they would have for a blind driveway sign. Um, with this being requested in conjunction with a child at play sign, um, we need to also consider the distance between signs and if it's reasonable to put in both signs or if one would be more applicable or beneficial. Um, Which driveway are we talking about? So this driveway, if you look at the map, you can't actually see a driveway right now, but there's a driveway there and is not visible as of here because there is a crest about here on the road. And from this side, you can't see as far as these couple driveways. The request came from this area for a child at play sign. These are kind of the smaller frontage houses, same here. So if a child at play sign was to be determined applicable and the committee suggested it, we would likely send a resolution, well, send a recommendation to the town board asking if they agree with us making the recommendation to place a child at play sign and that would go ahead of these houses and this house on each side. If it's a blind driveway sign, it would be generally the same situation where this body would make a recommendation to the town board. The town board can determine if we put in a new sign, specifically a blind driveway or hidden driveway sign. Um, so you don't recommend both? Because of the need for separation of the signs and the distance from <clears throat> the affected area, no, we in the engineering department would not recommend both. So what's, I know what the speed limit is, what is the average speed on this road? When was the last time we did a count like in this section? Because I'm thinking rural country road, 40 mile an hour speed limit, I'm doing 45, 50. That's what most people would probably be because it's yeah, and I, I think we can look and see when our last count was, yeah. and maybe that's because a, I think that again, warranted. I mean, both those signs that. sound like they're important. I just don't know if I would have my kid playing anywhere near the road on a 40 mile an hour road. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's part of a parent's responsibility. So um, we do. I don't know the last count. I'll pull up, pull okay. up the chart and see if I can find one. Um, for both of those signs, when looking at the determination with the MUCCD that we could pull, um, neither of them are actually based on speed unless you decide to install them. They're based on sight distance. And in that area, sight distance does warrant some form of signage um, because you can't see over that You can't hill. put them on one sign, like the, the no. child at play strip with a blind driveway sign above it? No. Was there a a site distance measurement taken when they applied for the permit for their driveway? Part of the site plan and application? I have to go back and look. That's one thing that I was thinking about today when we were out there is what they... You would have measured it, right, based on the, the criteria. Yeah. And if it wasn't a good location, it should have been brought up during the permit and identified as either not a good place for the driveway, and there may not be another place or a mitigating measure to address that. Uh, but I don't know what the town's uh, permit process is, or the house is already built and the driveway's there. Yes, yeah. correct. Yeah, so well, one of the houses is already built. Both, uh, both, hou both, both houses the are in. There's a house back here. Both driveways are about as far there. from the hill as could be done, so mm -hmm. it was mitigated as. You maximized it. And maximized they share a driveway? They do not, no. Oh, so two, it's two driveways. Two, that two separate are, parcels. Two and blind say, driveways, okay. Uh, apologies, Google Maps hasn't caught up to right here, yeah. times yet, but the two houses exist, and it's hard to see on here, but you can see kind of faintly that. I'm not sure these are blind driveways. There's nothing obstructing the view. Right, it's just, it's it's just, it's just coming over that hill. It's a sight distance, sight distance. Sure. Is, there, yeah. is, is the sight distance based on speed as well? The site distance is based on the speed limit or based on the 85th percentile. If the 85th percentile isn't given, generally we look to speed limit or we take counts. Um, we looked at a conservative based on the speed limit at this time, and that would be if we look at the speed limit is 40 and our conservative from there, we go to 45 then the site distance you would desire would be 675 feet. 
And what do we have? That we need to determine. So we just uh, went out there today, did some initial um, review of it. So again, this is something we can get uh, information. So you're going westbound. And we're not 600 feet. For reference, yeah. that's approximately 675. Yeah, and the rise is there on the... From the rise of the, the top of the hill. Okay. In that direction. The three. And, and standing at the driveway here, you can't see the other driveway. And that's at, so that's at your eye height? Standing up that's at your standing. eye height, not at the that's 39 the or whatever it is. Okay. Where you have that little green marker, is that the driveway we're talking about? I thought the driveway was further down. That's the hill, the crest of the hill. The, the right Drive marker is the crest here. of the hill. The left marker is the 675 feet. Oh. And where my mouse is, is the driveway you can't see. I mean, I think we need some additional information. Yeah. From the so if you measure 675 feet from the driveway, where does that put you? Technology is great when it works. <laughs> so, yeah. So you're very near the crest of the hill at that. I'm curious to see if you actually have enough sight distance. It's probably right on the cusp. So are these people asking for? Are these two new houses asking for that blind drive sign? They're asking for and or the blind driveway and the child at play. So they're asking for one or the other or and both. And they're the ones that are set way back and they've got, the they want the it's, child at play with multiple houses in this area. It's uh, so all the part of the same family. Yeah. The, right. Oh, okay. Those three houses right where you got your mouse right now, did they, have they ever requested before the new houses came in? Because it is part of the whole family. It's the grand, it's the, the people. I am not aware. The grandchildren are the ones that are uh, of that one where your green arrow is right there. This one, I believe that they're the grandchildren of. These lots are family. Family. They said that these ones have turned over recently and this one's turned <coughs> over recently. And so they're all part of the asking as well? I'm they, not aware. Uh, we don't have individual requests from them. Okay. They kind of shared as the collective we. Okay. Um, we don't have individual requests from all of those homeowners. They just said as, as neighbors and as the, mm -hmm. the street, they had some concerns now with young kids and but we can put out the traffic counters, obviously yeah. get some speed data, um, look at what you know the original application put in for what the slated site distance was supposed to be. Um, and then in the meantime, we can also do some measurements out there and see kind of what we have and then circle back and our Right. Sound good? Yep. Yeah. Good, okay, thank you. Okay, uh, moving on. Number four is a Qualtra Road and the Hallmark Road dual arrow sign request. And this is a follow-up for Ms. Sarah Waterman. And I will move the map there too. Um, but back in, I want to say February, if I remember correctly, um, a concern was brought to us about Qualtra and Hallmark's intersection and the house at the end of the intersection, sorry, um, I let you correct. Sorry, the house at the end of the intersection requested a double arrow sign, approximately here. Mm -hmm. um, there is a stop sign right here on Hallmark, and part of the determination that this committee made was to not install a double arrow sign. Um, based on a misinterpretation of the METCD where my understanding was that a stop sign should not be used in conjunction with a double arrow sign. When reviewing that, um, it I understand and we've discussed that um, that can be used, it's essentially it can't be used on the same post um, but a double arrow sign could be used at that intersection. 
when determining if a double arrow sign is an appropriate measure, it's based on engineering review, which can include site distance and generally can be considered if someone going through that intersection would expect the road to continue on through. Um, and generally you also want to especially consider nighttime driving in right. that situation. Um, a similar intersection at town where it's a subdivision coming out to a T um, that we've reviewed previously is in the white, I'm gonna br bring you over there so I can tell you the correct road names. Um, the old Browncroft Road and um, Parkview area, this intersection we've looked at, and on the end of this intersection, there's a ravine here. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the reason that that intersection has a double arrow sign. Um, so we wanted to bring this item back to the committee to review again, just to make a determination with the completely correct information and decide again if a double arrow sign is or should be placed at that intersection. Wasn't part of the concern the last uh, during that last conversation that there's another house with that same thing, but the the sign has lost some of its. Um, just to the north, there is another one that's like it, and that's what we were trying to come right. up with, and we tabled it just to take a look at it that you know make sure one we're in compliance and two you know we're consistent. It looked like it had lost some of its. Not every. I know it's not. Thank you. I was going to say sparkle, I, but that's yeah. not the correct. <laughs> I thought term. we may have removed one of them. Yeah, well, I thought that's we what we were talking not, about. We, did we didn't take it out. We, we said let's make sure we're time. you know appropriate. We looked at that one and said you know not every intersection that comes to a T do you have a double yellow sign at? You may have a stop sign. Not every T has a stop sign either. Um, you know, so it's some engineering judgment. Um, obviously, you should stop at a T whether there's a stop sign or not, um, or at least bear the right of way to the bear the right of way to whoever yield the right of way to whoever it's is coming. You don't have to stop. Thank you. So in, in my opinion, in, in that area, you're really not traveling that fast. If you're going east, you will have gone through one intersection that you presumably will have slowed down for at some point. So. Your, yeah, Hallmark and Holly Ridge. Yeah. So if if you're heading east out of that. Um, subdivision you're you're not going very fast you can't get up to speed very fast so for someone to have con want to continue through there it just doesn't seem like it would present uh like an immediate threat have they had anybody on their front lawn or anything like that Are there are no recorded accidents between 2019 well, and now i'm not necessarily an accident i'm just saying somebody that's driven was, and left i think it was generated the concerns generated somebody did I don't Drive go to lawn. the house, but I think go onto the lawn. I, right, went onto the lawn and then and realized they they shouldn't be there and backed up and left. And I think that's where the yeah, I get that the sign request I think originated from. <clears throat> um, I'd hate to wait until somebody hit their house or somebody in the yard. But you had the same issue at the end of is it Kevin Drive or? Are you thinking up here? Can we uh, see not, that? not there, that's but in the you. Can down we see bowl. that one that's up already? Can you see? Oh, sure. Can you pull I can that pull up. That you can go into because that one on Parkview. You brought. You mentioned that one on Parkview. If you go on Parkview, and actually I just was on there the other day, it's it's not. I'm not sure how effective that one is. I don't know personally, but when you say what that, do you mean by effective? Well, I mean in preventing people from going over the hill, I, or are people really. Uh, well, maybe. I think that. it was concern of what's beyond. What's it's not beyond, just a right. You know, if you go off the road, normally you have a recovery distance. Right. Um, if you go off the edge of that. Is there a guide rail there, there too? I don't travel over uh, there. There is on Parkview. There, okay. Yeah. That makes There's sense. a little bit of a. But a there is a guide, guide rail. Right. There is one. Okay. But I'm not sure that. But a guide rail is not intended for a straight right. on yes. and head on. It's intended to. To guide. Guide you back into the travel lane. That's not really a T intersection either. That has it's a, a slightly weird angle. There, right. But yeah. I mean, when you get to the end of Hallmark, there's a house right there, right? Two story home. On level ground that both headlights and you have all kinds of cues that it's there and you're approaching a stop sign so um, which is very similar to so this lots the, of intersections right so this was the city view one that I think the neighbor to the south saw and said hey they've got a <laughs> double yellow arrow in front of their house with a stop sign 
can we have the same thing? So this is the approach. Okay. In City View, and then if you can jump to Hallmark. And there is, a, I see a, a light at the intersection too, which helps because, you know, that's one good thing about our town is they do have lights Signal. where there's an intersection, yeah. you know, yeah, there's a like mass this. Arm. Sorry, let me back up. So Could here there is a light, light. Mm -hmm. as well as just slightly down the street. So this looks to me like both of these uh, intersections have adequate sight distance. Yep. The, the northern intersection according to the Google image, needs to have some tree trimming so that you can see the stop sign. Um, Which is from 2012. Right, so I don't, you know, that could be, <laughs> that could be already addressed or it could be worse. Yeah, um, <laughs> right. I, I'm, not, I, I'm not inclined to say that we, would, we should put another one. In fact, I think I would just take the other one down if it's no longer having the reflectivity that it needs. Because if you have it up and it's not, it doesn't have the right reflectivity, it's not serving any purpose. I agree, this is a residential, a residential area. You can cut through on Hallmark, but again, you're going through an intersection. So your, your speeds are generally slower. I think it was probably a fluke that that happened with somebody pulling onto their grass, but I don't know. I'm not inclined to say that you would need them in this particular case, either I, of them. I agree with Dan on both of them. Take the other one down and don't bother with this one. I mean, there's four dead end intersections right there that you they would qualify for that sign if you could put, if you were going to put one up. There's four intersections I see right there where that would that would also need one. You know, one there, one there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if this was a higher speed area um, with different geometry, I'd be more inclined to say sure. You know, it's just an extra added safety feature. But in this particular case, with it being residential, you know. The people that are driving through this all live there. They know where these turns are. No. It's not really a cut through, although you could argue that some people are using Hallmark. I've, I've been in that neighborhood a lot. It is not easy to cut through from, no, it's, it's, um, no. Qualtro from Creek is Street through. to Qualtro. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, nope. Like that would be difficult yeah. generally, and I, I really don't think it would save a ton it's of intentional. time. intentional. And these legs are not very long where you're gaining so much yeah. speed that, you know, you can't regain control. Right. Um, with that, if, and Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, if the committee would recommend removing a sign for the head of the DPW to have that done, a recommendation would need to be made by, to the town board, and the town board would have to mm -hmm. approve that recommendation. Yep. Um, I would say if the sign is still meeting the reflectivity uh, characteristics, then I would just leave it until it doesn't, and then I would remove it. Because okay. while it's serviceable, it's not serving any harm to leave it there. Okay. Then maybe we can take a vote. Yeah, maybe we should take a, um, then what you're saying though, Dan, is that we should leave that until, uh, until at, a, at such a time that we're feeling that the town who who feels that that it's not uh you can check you the, refl the reflectivity yeah. the reflectivity is, got, is yes. done and, and gone that's easy with enough it. to do okay the measurement. then measure it okay perfect then can we have a motion that we want we'd like to um uh that we're that you don't want to do, we're not going to take it down we're going to leave that we're going to leave that as it is so we but would check the reflectivity of the sign, and if it does not, not meet, meet the, the requirements, then it would be removed. Moved. If it does meet the requirements, it would be left there until it no longer does. That's fine. Perfect. Perfect how you say that. Sounds good. Can someone make a motion for oh, that? I make that motion. <laughs> that the, 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 the sign <laughs> has, is checked for reflectivity, and if it passes, we keep it. If right. it doesn't, we'll take it down. Sounds good. And that we don't put up any other signs. In that lo those locations. In those locations, yes, at Qualtro. Great. Perfect. And a second? I'll second. Thank you, Jason. Okay. Moved by Lori, second. second by Jason. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? So moved. So thank you so. Um, next item is Guy Grace Lane, a speeding concern. Um, this is again is a follow up on that that we had up in the previous uh, few months from Sarah? I can chat briefly while Sarah's Thanks. pulling that up. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, I think we got in just around our June meeting timeframe. So this was one of our 
um, things over the summer, so it's on the uh, south end of it. Yep, it's right in there. Um, so this was a request, um, speeding concerns in that area. Um, we, subsequent to that, put the traffic counters in as, as we said we would. Um, Sarah's pulling up the data on uh, the traffic counts and we can share those with the committee and what, what numbers we came up with. That was 143 Guy Grace, I believe. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yep, that was mm -hmm. the request we had. So yep. this is, like I say, the follow-up to being able to put the, the traffic counters out and then coming back with the data. Um, so that was done over the summer in, over in June, July, and the ADT was 2,358. And the 85th percentile speed was 29 miles per hour in a 25 mile per hour speed limit zone. Um, See, can you repeat that? 2,300 in a day on that little loop? No, I think that was 2,300 over the week. So, oh, okay. It was, oh, sorry, it must have been different. different. Reports it as vehicles vehicles analyzed as twenty three hundred. Twenty three hundred divided by seven. Okay. Yeah, it must have been written down wrong. Sorry. They had a lot of parties that we were <laughs> <laughs> saying. Very busy. Pretty big one. Very busy. No, so twenty three hundred and fifty eight cars over the week. Um, speed limit twenty five. The eighty fifth percentile was twenty nine okay. on there. So we're like three hundred forty a day. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. sounds more like yeah. it. a little better. Three thirty six. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's okay. We had a population explosion in the field. <laughs> it's a busy little space. Um, so it really as we isn't. Typical look. I mean, unfortunately, people are speeding. I mean, that's as a unfortunate. You know, it happens. But um, when the 85th is less than five over, yeah, uh, yeah. Fortunately, is kind of similar to where we see in other locations. It wouldn't be, um, you know, typically the sheriff's office looking five or ten over you know, to issue a ticket or something, so it's not even within that. Where is this location again? Um, it's between Anthony Circle, so north of Plank, so it's kind of in the mm -hmm. neighborhood. Yeah, so north of Plank, west of Hatch. So, um, so you've kind of got Yorktown and some of those other. So, I mean, they are, I mean, they are kind of accelerating to get up to speed pretty quickly. I mean, they could be <laughs> carrying on. Yeah. Guy Grace kind of and loops around, so they could the be neighbors carrying speeding. through to Simone. Yeah. yeah. It's not a circle. It's so not a cut through yeah. to anything. No, it's kind of pretty much in the middle of that right. neighborhood. So it's people either say cutting through, but leaving their neighborhood and heading over towards Plank and Creek, or mm -hmm. people going north to get to Hatch. And so it's no. not a. It's a it's neighborhood neighborhood cut through, if yeah. you want to say that. Yeah. It's not a. I could see. Of, yeah, I, I could see how 29 miles per hour at that small stretch, because you're kind of starting. You had to come to a near complete stop in order to go through there. So if you're getting up to 29, you're, they're getting up to speed quick. So I can see how it would seem like they're moving through, they're moving through there fast. So um, generally in a situation like this, we would recommend enforcement by the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. um, if that's what the committee believes is applicable, we can do that. If there's another thought out there, we can consider that. Do they have a neighborhood watch? I am not aware. Okay. We can obviously we'll follow back up with 143. Yeah, share the good. share the data yeah. of what we got and share for one, the committee's for my neighborhood, discussion. And the neighborhood that Mary uh, Sweeney and I both live in, when we had a speeding issue, we started a neighborhood watch, and we were talking about it, and it turned out the guy that was sitting next to me, he's like, "Oh my God, that's my kid." It'll stop, you know. So it was. It was just a. It was a, just one of the teenagers in the neighborhood flying home in between classes or something. So sometimes just having the neighbors talk to each other, you'll find out who's doing the speeding. It's probably some kid. They've either got Facebook groups now or next door. Yeah. Apps or other you know stuff within neighborhoods. Okay. So well, we can could, share could that we information back with it. Leave the that information that you'll share with them and, and hopefully encourage them to. Uh, follow up with them on in their neighborhood and see if that's something that they're they have and, and they're aware of and and then if not and as well as maybe encouraging the sheriff's department to make some loops through there you know I know that there's uh, the supervisor regularly requests certain areas in the town 
that we've had issues, and I think that that would be. Do you need a? Um, you don't need a motion on that. Just a follow up. Could yep, any other um, comments? Questions on that? I, I too have heard from a couple of people in that area too about it. But I, the same thing. I did think that it was more the residents that live there that might be coming through there. So, um, okay. So, thank you for that. Um, Next item is new business. We have, we have one held item. That's Route 441 and Liberty Street traffic uh, light request. I don't think we've had. We're still waiting. The state waiting. is analyzing that. So once we have additional information or um, a study back from the state, we'll share it with this group. Great. Thank you for that, Mark. Perfect. Um, so next order is new business. And so combined um, uh, Valley Greens and Summer Glen. There's a request for enforcement and a request for a slow down strip on the speed limit entering the closed loop, Mark yep. and Sarah. So this was, um, we had a resident come in in the spring, um, share with us the concern, you know, their daughter lived in the neighborhood, concerned about speeds. Um, we did put the traffic counters out, um, and I don't know off the top of my head what the, the traffic um, 85th was at that point. Um, we did bring it back to the committee that was our point of clarification. We talked about putting the child to play strips on the post. We mm -hmm. put slow down signs in, so the slow down signs um, were placed and put in. Um, those are done. Um, and then subsequent to that, the resident asked, you know, if we could request um, some additional enforcement from law enforcement for that. So it's kind of more of an FYI. We'll we'll pass it on to the okay. um, to the sheriff's office through the the. Uh, Supervisors, you know, as uh, she meets with the sheriff's office, and then Sarah's had uh, conversations with the resident again, and um, did have some concerns from other neighbors that they were going to, you know, bring forth. So Mark's talking about the stop sign here. That's the enforcement that we're discussing. Another item since printing the agenda and sending it out um, was a resident requested slow down strips on the speed limit sign coming into this section of the neighborhood. Um, my understanding from the minutes from the last meeting was that part of the determination of putting the slow down strips on the stop sign, I mean the speed limit signs here and here was that it can be considered a cut through. Um, and to answer an item Mark brought up, the 85th speed in that area was 28 miles per hour on this section. Um, generally, we originally the request was for a child at play sign in that neighborhood. Um, generally, a child at play sign is used if it's not clear that you're entering an area where children would be playing. Generally, it's expected that children will be playing in subdivisions, and that's Part of why the determination was used was to do slow down strips instead of ch a child at play sign. Um, so looking at this section that it can be considered a dead end, you can't cut through to a different area, I think that should definitely be considered in this decision making process. Okay, then your suggestion is, is that we do put the slow the um, no, or no strips at all. Nothing at Nothing at all. end. Generally, we wouldn't do that in a situation like yeah. this. An option would be to take counts in that neighborhood and, and check the speed if that's desired. Mm -hmm. um, if there's any other thoughts out there, we can definitely consider them. And if somebody feels putting slow down, a slowdown strip on that speed limit sign, or there's also one in this area and this area, um, that can definitely be considered. <coughs> did we have, we had the actual counts of how many cars were going through there? The we count was didn't count this section. Yeah, we didn't the count other, that piece. We looked at side. the okay. cut through piece and we did lazy trail just to kind of right. see if that was in included that. Um, if I remember right. The counts were significantly less as far as the quantity of cars and lazy trails you right. would expect than, sure. you know, what was Valley Green. We were try trying to capture mm -hmm. and see if it is more of a cut through in Valley Green. Valley Green did have a, a significantly higher traffic count than Lazy Trail did. Mm -hmm. But the 85th was 28 miles an hour? Is that what you said? Yes, it was. Yes. That's pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. It is also a curve. 
I mean, I my understanding is this strips Where? weren't put on the curve, but I think they were in the, before. What's that? Forty seven or forty? Oh, yeah, we had them over at yeah in front of ninety seven. I think we had them over on that. Is that before or after data? That's before. I'm sorry. That's before da before putting the before strips. Before they up. were the put strips up. were just put yeah. up about a week and a half. Okay. Ago. Oh, they were just okay. Has yes, there been recently. any after data collected on any of these slowdown strips mm -hmm. on previous, not that here, but other locations? Not specifically. Just to see their effectiveness, uh, you know, to see. I mean, in, in some respects, it's a feel good thing, right? But if it's not changing the driver behavior by more than three miles an hour, they're really just going up for the looks, right? We could go back and. Put them on Valley Green again, kind of check, see if there's any noticeable difference. and then Or another location where we did Or put them on the west, years ago. the west side. You know, yeah. we could count them on the west side of that loop and see Anywhere. if that makes any difference. Because they're pretty common, right? Yeah. They are. And like any signage that you see a lot, it loses its effectiveness versus, oh, slow down. Well, this must be a problem here. When you see it all over the place, mm -hmm. it tends to... Uh, become a little bit more ho-hum. Yeah. So how does the board feel about um, just taking a look again at those, at, at the at the strips, at the slow strips that, on, on, that are on there right now that it just went up a week, a week and a half ago and, and determine? So Tim, are you making a recommendation to take counts again on Valley no. Green? No, or just are you making a recommendation to go back and see where we've put slowdown strips previously after having a count taken and take a recount in one of those locations. Yeah, in other locations I think would be more appropriate, and it's certainly not a week after you put them up, but just to see. For future recommendations, it's helpful to know what they're, uh, if they're meeting the need and actually doing something rather than, uh, you know, just like we put up signs all over the place, but. No one wants that either, right? Is, is it having an effect that was intended? Right. Yeah, and that, it'll affect our decision making going forward when people request these, we'll be able to cite that information. Okay, yeah, we'll take a look at some we've done in the past two or three years, more recent ones, we can put some counts out and then see kind of where we're coming back on those. So for this particular item, the valley, the, uh, this, um, the request for the slowdown strip, we are going to deny that at, the, at this time and uh, put on a, on a um, in the future, take a look at. I mean, we can leave it in our as a held item. I don't know if it needs to be a held item on the on the agenda, um, but I think we can keep it in our our queue of okay. requests and locations. And then you know we keep a running list of spots to put traffic counters out. I'd okay. like to put them on Penfield Center as we're looking at the the child at play. Um, we were going to put them out. Um, we have them on Cambrai right now. Hunter's Drive. I'd like to put them on Fox Hills. I think we've got a couple others. I'd like to capture. Maybe first. Before. Okay. Um, obviously, those are always kind of weather depending, you know, to get those out, um, especially in the fall. We kind of wait to get back into the school season cycles. We've got a quick time between September and November before snow flies. Yes. Snow flies to, to get them in. So I'd like to kind of hit some of those other locations. And so, so we'll keep that on hold. Okay. Thank you. Uh, then, next item then, Saybrook. Uh, drive uh, a crosswalk request that was from brought in through Eric, but maybe Mark or Sarah want to have to take Yeah, that? so he just uh, shared this one with us today. Um, they did have a, a concern, um, I believe, where Saybrook uh, meets Wayland, so a little to the south. Oh, sorry. Um, concern about first sight distance. So uh, Eric and his crew said they've gone out uh, most recently, trimmed back some of the shrubs. You can see the shrubbery there of sight distance, um, and then they requested a stop bar. Um, be placed there, you know, at Whalen, um, as well as uh, the possibility of a crosswalk. Um, so we can look at, you know, uh, those conditions. I don't have any other, you know, data to share with the committee. That was just something that came in. Um, he said he'd share it with the committee. Um, obviously, first and foremost, making sure we have proper sight distance. So it sounds like they've just gone out and trimmed the, the hedges and the shrubs back um, to improve sight distance. We can look at, you know, the need for a stop bar there. Um, you know, with it, and then you know whether it warrants a, a crosswalk or not at that location. Is that also where? Isn't there a new um, uh, RGE uh, sub 
The town board, in, yeah, the right. town board did approve a substation there. I don't think that's proceeded as of yet, but it okay. would be in that open about where you see the 1164, the, just the other side. Yep. So over in there, um, just on the other side of that, is to put in a, um, a small substation in that area just to, to meet the demands for electricity. Okay. But the expectation is not that the substation will affect. Distance. No, and it, it's Setback. well back from the road, so it shouldn't you know impact it at all. But <clears throat> obviously, from your conversation with the town board, that intersection looks familiar. Yeah, yes, it does. Yeah, so they're really requesting they 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 want a crosswalk right over they across their entrance. And I say I don't know too much more about it. I think just the concern they had to pull so far out, and then you know obviously with the vegetation, probably weren't seeing people walking down the sidewalk right. as they're approaching the the stop sign, so I think we need to take a look at you know, the location of the stop sign, whether a stop bar is needed, and then okay. obviously first and foremost making sure the, the vegetation's so, cut back so that you can see a pedestrian walking down the sidewalk as you're approaching that intersection. Eric has trimmed back the vegetation? He said he has, yes. Yeah, so. I would table this. Let's see if that... That may have that solved, may have the, solved the problem. Right there and yep. taking care of that. I, this is a... Saybrook, is that a closed neighborhood? Is that the only way? Um, it does no, connect to 250, yes. so it does, get out the other end it does have a way. connection to 250 on the other side. Okay, but it's not. So Glendonwood is the other access point. How many point. homes are in there approximately? There's not that many. Yeah, 50. That stretch. 100. Yeah, the, the number of trips in and out of there almost don't warrant that size of an entrance. <laughs> and that was. It's a good entrance, yeah. That it was country club east. I think that was more of the consideration at the time was the landscaping, I think, more than the wide entrance. So they were one of the few that have. Right, but the wide entrance is probably what's precipitating the, the desire to have a crosswalk there. Well, and part of the concern that was in the email was that you pull up here and you can't always see someone coming on the mm -hmm. sidewalk from this side. Right. So, so the, the concern is that people aren't realizing that as they're approaching that intersection that there's a sidewalk there and that people might be coming and that bikers have if also been a concern, like bicyclists. Go to Google Maps, there is um, was landscaping in the middle, so it was a divided entrance with landscaping. There. It's like a boulevard at one point? Yeah. Has maybe. that landscaping been removed? I don't think it's been removed, but that's okay. maybe what has been trimmed, or it looks obviously that the shrubbery at the corner maybe what's kind of impacting it. So yeah. To, uh, and that, and that to Dan's comments, maybe just trimming the vegetation trimming back has been sufficient enough, and we that can kind of see how that's. That landscaping yeah. in the middle is is pretty high too. I think, if I remember right, the street view just to that they that's part of the subdivision. So who is responsible for that? Um, that's part of our road, so it's part of the town's, you know, maintenance of it. Um, but I'm thinking that this vegetation on the on the oh, right side as you're looking, you see the sidewalk there. Yeah, yeah. Down in Wayland, if you can't see either side, and yeah. you pull up quick, and people roll that yep. stop yeah. sign, can you see a resident or a you know pedestrian no. coming? And out with that, you then you we would consider a crosswalk to put some something in the pavement to give you a visual cue. But in this case. I don't know what it looks like now, now that he's trimmed it, but that might have solved the problem. Um, maybe it would be appropriate then for Eric to reach back out to that resident and see if that has improved the situation. Yeah. Mark, are you guys putting detectables on your curb ramp? Your curb ramps, um, we do in all other locations, so I don't know if obviously this one... It's from 2022. Yeah. Okay, so that would be a retrofit at some point. We put the detectables in there. Hmm. Old sidewalk must just. Yeah, that's way overgrown there. Not have it. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yep. <laughs> so I, I would go out and look at it again from a town perspective and make your own evaluation. Is, you know, do, do you perceive it differently now that it's been trimmed? Okay. Because based on this Google Earth image, which you said is this year. Yep. Uh, that's it's way overgrown. You don't have any good sight triangle there at all. So it, he might need to go back and cut it even more aggressively than he did. Okay, we can relay that information and look into it again. Are those okay. likely all within the towns right away, or 
It appears so Rail based right on away. the mapping. Yep. This is the edge of the right of way, hmm. and we own all the way over to the other property line that's yeah. to the right. So it's off we own slightly. Yeah. Uh, yeah keep going over is ours. So I would actually yes. take those yeah. trees down got them all closest down. to the <laughs> intersection and take <laughs> yep. them right down. Yep. yep. All of them. All of them. Yep. Which the property owners are not going to like. Yeah, they're nice about. trees, but you got to yeah. take them down. I'd take the, all, that whole that whole section right down. I don't know what the trimming existed. If it was trimming or it was well, and I trimming. Think, <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. I, that's why I'm that's why I'm suggesting like that trimming. you go back out and evaluate it. That's, and for yeah. this side, I think the the right of way would need to be um, checked because the mapping is offset slightly. So it's possible that the right of way does not go all the way to here. Um, yeah, we'll have to verify that before yeah, we mm -hmm. before we take a tree down, not on yep. our property. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I think the town. I think the resident would probably rather have you take the do the expense of taking it down than down because it's if it has to come down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Agreed. That would okay. be my recommendation before you go into crosswalks and. So we recommend that we bring that back to Eric and his and have him DPW take a look at that um, again. That intersection, uh, those trees, that Saybrook yep. Drive there. And then if it's still a concern or needs additional review, we can bring it back great. on the future okay. agenda. Everybody good on that? Yes. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, and that is it for new business. Um, is anyone have any? Unless anybody else has anything else, no new. Nothing new to bring up for new business. Our next meeting will be Tuesday, October 18th at 5 p.m. Again, this is a new time and a new meeting time and a new day time um, for Tuesday. So hopefully you can join us for the next transportation meeting. And I'd like to thank um, all the board for, for coming this well uh, tonight. And I also uh, neglected to welcome Sarah back after her um, the birth of her lovely um, new son. Um, so welcome back to the town and again mark valentine thank you very much linda cummings for as always for your work you that you do here and uh pctv so with that with that everyone have a nice safe evening thank you